Welcome to Nicole's Review. Nicole's Review, we feature talk that matters. But at Nicole's Review, we took a break last year. We are back, people in Arlington. We are back. I know you've been waiting for this for the longest time, and we are back for you. At Arlington, ACMI, we are back. And this third episode today, we have two special guests. It is such a great honor to have my two very, very first guests for my third episode. I have David Sellers and Maya Bits. Uh, help me with your name. Nitzberg. Nitzberg. There you go. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for being on the show for my very first episode in the third season. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start. Tell me a little bit about both of you. Who wants to start first? I sure. know I have two of you. Yeah, my name is Maya Nitzberg, and I am the Development and Communications Coordinator at The Possible Project. And my name is David Sells. So I'm the Makerspace Education Coordinator for The Possible Project. Very good. I am so excited to have both of you on the Thank show today. You. We have so much to talk about. Should we start? Yes. OK, let's do it. All right, could you tell me a little bit about what your project do, what your organization stands sure. for? Yeah. So. The Possible Project is an entrepreneurship program. It's a nonprofit, it's mm -hmm. an after school program located in Cambridge. And we teach high school students how to start and run their own business. Wow. Anything, David? Yeah. Um, so, our, uh, let's see, we're a startup. We're in our fifth year now. Um, fifth? And, yep. And uh, our program has a let's see, four major components to it. So we have an entrepreneurship curriculum uh, that we teach to our students. We're a, I think you mentioned we're a three-year program. Uh, students start with us their sophomore year, and they stay with us through, through their senior year. And so for about a year and a half, uh, we have a, <clears throat> a fairly uh, structured curriculum where they're learning various types of business concepts. And then the uh, latter year and a half is mm -hmm. more independent-driven, where they're uh, working on their own business operations. So that's the second component, is all of our students are mm -hmm. running their own businesses. Mm -hmm. And so uh, tw about every other month or so, mm -hmm. we have a marketplace for our students to sell their wares. Wow. And so we've got students who are, let's see, they've got businesses where they're making soaps. We've got students who are selling hair care products, candles, jams, uh, custom iPhone cases, whole, shirts. Whole range of yeah. products, wow. yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Now, what are the range of the um, ages for the students? So these are high school students. They start in their sophomore year. Um, they come to the program, whether by word of mouth. So we have a lot of students who come and they're like, I want to join this program. It sounds <laughs> like we have a really beautiful space. You walk in and it's, it feels like a professional work environment, but it's also, um, it feels like a, a, wor a shared work environment as well, so mm -hmm. it's like very bright and colorful, and um, and teenagers love coming to our space. Wow. So they talk about it with their friends, and so we have high school students coming in asking to join our program, mm -hmm. um, but then also teachers and counselors and people at schools nominate students to be in the program. Wow. Um, so they they come in as David said in their sophomore year, and they're mm -hmm. with us for three years through a six level program. That's interesting. Now, anything special that you're working on? At this moment that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, so we are currently um, in, as David said, in, in Central Square. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're right between Harvard and MIT. Okay. And um, we are we are currently serving about 150 students. Um, wow. And in a year, we're able to serve 220, but that's just not enough. We need to, we want to serve more students. So we're looking to expand to another site that's larger. So in from a 5,000 square foot space to a 9,000 square foot space. So now we'll be able to serve over 350 students, which is really exciting. That is exciting. Now, where exactly the address, where you guys located at? Right now, we're located at 955 Massachusetts Avenue. Oh, you're in Mass Ave. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, but we also have a makerspace, which is located at 107 Portland Street in Kendall Square. Okay. Now, the project called The Possible. That's it. The, the Possible Project. project. <laughs> now, tell me, tell me about this. Now, why The Possible Project? Why you pick the name? What's the, what's the meaning of that? <laughs> oh, no. He's laughing. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, when our, our program was started, um, we had the... We wanted to make sure that our students felt like anything was possible. Okay. Um, the students that 
we target are, uh, so we seek out students who we believe have untapped potential, sort of mm -hmm. the silent middle. Mm -hmm. So we feel like there's a lot of resources out there for students who are really, really struggling and mm. for students who are really excelling. Um, but those who are, you know, getting C's, maybe some D's, who are kind of coasting through mm -hmm. without uh, some special help, whether from their families or community organizations, uh, they can kind of end up falling through the cracks and not get the help that they need to really get them to where they could be. Wow. So um, our program, we, uh, let's see, we target students who are low income, who are on individualized education plans and who are recent, recent immigrants. immigrants. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very touching. And so, uh, and so we want to, uh, you know, we want our students to know that anything is possible mm -hmm. and to uh, sort of, yeah. By, such by starting these businesses, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're teaching them entrepreneurship and we're saying <laughs> that, you know, through entrepreneurship we're, we're providing the vehicle so that they're gaining that toolbox of skills so that right. they compete in the 21st century economy. So anything is possible. That's such a great tool to have, you know, mentally for the student to know that they can learn that and go out there and be something and do something. Yeah, so a lot of these students, like, they don't feel, you know, that they have the, the ability to yeah. go in and, you know, they'll graduate from high school, but then what? What are they going to do after they graduate from high school? Are they going to go into a four-year um, post-secondary education, right, college, a training program? Are they going to go into a job? What job would that be? Mm -hmm. But through the program, they're able to augment those skills like leadership and teamwork and resilience and then be able to take those skills and really you know, succeed later on after they graduate from high school. Okay, now describe one of your greatest accomplishments that <laughs> you, yeah. anyone? <laughs> Can you just describe one that you're so proud of? You'd like to share with me today? And the viewers, I might not. The Makerspace? Uh, the Makerspace. Sure. Maker yeah. Oh yeah, so the, uh, the Makerspace is uh, probably the newest addition to our program. This is our first term really operating from uh, outside, out of the makerspace. Yeah. Um, and so far it's been going really well. So the intent behind the makerspace was, uh, well, there's a few different parts to it. So mm -hmm. uh, programmatically, we have a lot of students who are making products. And mm -hmm. so we wanted to um, enhance that. Mm -hmm. So originally we had students who wanted to do things like make a custom t-shirt, but then they'd order uh, like they'd create an image and they'd upload it online and then they'd wait for it to be delivered and then they'd mark that up to like $20 and it's try to sell really that. It's expensive. And so we wanted, since our students were already trying to uh, create stuff to sell themselves, mm -hmm. we wanted them to be closer to that manufacturing process so they got a more comprehensive understanding of the mm -hmm. uh, design and production process of, as exactly. it pertains to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So at the Makerspace we have a laser cutter, we've got a 3D printer, we have a vinyl cutter and a heat press and a spray booth. And these are all tools that uh, allow our students to create products that um, mm -hmm. kind of are a notch above what they'd be able to do just on their own. Right. And it's also a space where, you know, there's a concrete floor, there's wooden tables that are easy to sand down, and so they can feel free to get more messy and experiment and prototype right. um, without worrying about scuffing up the tables and <laughs> exactly. like spilling stuff on the carpet. Um, also, we want our students to uh, have, with the students that we're working on with, we want them to have skills that will separate them from their peers. Mm -hmm. And so at the Makerspace, they're able to learn uh, 21st century skills like uh, engineering and design mm -hmm. and digital fabrication using professional design software like uh, the Adobe Creative Suite or SolidWorks. Um, and so that way where they can add those to their uh, to their resumes and they can, they'll have a portfolio that they can use to apply to colleges, to apply to internships mm -hmm. uh, after they finish with us when they graduate from high school. Right. Now, how do you feel about the community? How, how, how are the responses that yeah. you get from the communities? Well, right. I mean, we're, one of our one of our biggest achievements has been our relationships with the schools. Mm -hmm. So we are working with the three high schools in Cambridge. So mm -hmm. that's uh, Cambridge and Latin, Community Charter School of Cambridge, and Prospect Hill Academy. Mm -hmm. And we work really closely with those skills, with those schools. Mm -hmm. And it's and you know it's really important for us to keep that communication, um, you know, going. And 
So, you know, we have a lot of students coming from those schools. Mm -hmm. um, we are reaching 45% of the target demographic of sophomores That's in big. Cambridge. It's huge. And so, you know, we, we, we think or we hope that, you know, they see us as a positive organization in the community that we're bridging, you know, the Cambridge residents or the greater Boston community with the tech and innovation hub that's happening in Cambridge. I yes. mean, we're surrounded by all these resources like MIT and Harvard and, you know, this is such a, a hot spot for companies to come in, but we we want to bridge the gap between, you know, the, 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 the populations that we're serving and the companies like, wow. you know. Yeah, and so I'd say that that, that work's definitely being recognized. So uh, we have a partnership with the Cambridge Housing Authority, and that's right. actually uh, the property that the makerspace is running out of, is the Cambridge Housing Authority right. property. Right, you're right there. And so they, uh, they want to partner with us specifically for that reason, because they want to uh, create more of a bridge between the Cambridge residents and the tech hub that's right across the street. Right. And um, actually, so square. Biogen and Cambridge Housing oh, Authority. Oh, Biogen, it's right there. Oh, you have it all there. Yeah, there they you. both sponsored our the yeah. renovation of our makerspace. So you're getting a lot of responses from different people. Yeah, that and a lot to of involve. we have various events throughout the year. Um, so we invite local business mm -hmm. executives and Good idea. local business owners to come in, listen to our students pitch their business ideas, mm -hmm. and they're there to provide their guidance and feedback so that our students can learn um, you know, what to do differently. It's part of the whole critical thinking process. Uh, it's part of being an entrepreneur. Um, you know, and, and that's a big, that's a big part of our organization as well, really trying to connect our students with the local, local professionals, local businesses, and um, you know, get them to network with those people, mm -hmm. um, get, get exposure involved. to those professional settings and those and the professionals themselves. That's good. So it's it's a really big, you know, proponent of our program to connect with the community. Wow. Now, who are your ta targets? Who are our targets? Our students. Um, so the demographic is is high school. Our high school students who are you know recipients of IEP, who are recent immigrants. We have a lot of students who are coming from Haiti after the earthquake. Um, so wow. and um, students like David said that are in that quiet middle. So these mm -hmm. are students who are getting C's and D's in, in school, mm -hmm. who will most likely graduate from high school, but they're you know they're not sure what what comes next and. So we're helping them to, you know, see that anything is possible. And wow. Yeah, and, and along that, along those lines. So a lot of our our students are uh, like the first ones in their families to go to college, and mm -hmm. so a lot of them aren't necessarily thinking that college is a place like they're, they. It's just not part of their uh, thought process that that's what they would do after high school. Exactly. And so. Um, one of the core components of our program is pathways, and so we want, uh, we have it integrated within our program mm -hmm. to help our students start thinking about what are they going to do after high school? Is it going to be okay. college? Is it going to be a training program? Is it going to be an internship? Is it going to be a job? And then we help them uh, find the resources that they need in order to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we've gotten a lot of scholarships for our students. We've yeah. gotten uh, into many colleges. Yeah. And there's a lot of students in our program who never believed they would go to college. So, And they had people at schools and or in their communities who are saying, you don't have the grades to go to college. Mm -hmm. And so they come to our program and you know we're saying the complete opposite. You know, we, yeah. we, we know you can get in to, yeah. and, and it's, it's ultimately what you want. It's you know, such your future. Yeah, and you know, these are students who got in, you know, we have one student who's a recent immigrant from Haiti who didn't believe that he would ever go to college. Now he's at Ben Franklin Institute and he's doing amazingly. He's striving throughout that year and now he just got a job as he was promoted as a sales associate at Home Depot. I mean, this, this is amazing. Like one of our one of the many stories of our students really achieving, you know, success. Now, how do you communicate with a bilingual student? Do you I'm do well, that? it's just I mean, Sometimes it's difficult, um, but <laughs> they're with us for three years in the program, and a lot of the the program is for them to articulate their yeah. business ideas, yeah. you know, and and writing a business plan and providing like the the business the deck, yeah. you know, where they're pitching their businesses in front of people, and, and it's a lot of public speaking. Mm -hmm. So they're learning they're learning English and yeah. Yeah. second language, yeah, yeah. Exactly. and they know that. Yeah. You know, when they come in. Now, where do people get all that information? Mm -hmm. 
You have um, a website. Or <laughs> <laughs> what can you share with the viewers? Where can somebody get the information? You know, if somebody want to apply, or if we have students in Arlington that like yeah. to get involved, sure. you like to share with the viewers? Or? Sure, yeah. So you could, uh, one of the best places is to go to our website, which mm. is uh, possibleproject.org. OK. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. On Twitter, we're at vpossproj. P O S S P R O J. Okay. And on Facebook, you can just search for the Possible Project. Yeah. Okay. And we're always looking for volunteers. Yep. Okay. Um, and we have events all the time, so we publish that on our social media platforms. One event is a marketplace, so our student businesses will put out all of their products on a table and invite the community to come out and interface with our, our student businesses. Excellent. So anybody's welcome to that. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, two marketplaces coming up. We've got a marketplace coming up on June 11th and one June 26th. Yeah, June 26th. June 11th and June 26th. Yeah. I keep trying to pull that. I keep oh, it a <laughs> sticker. Right? It's like sticky. The Possible Project, everyone. Excellent. I am so pleased to have both of you on the show. And anything you'd like to share with us? Anything possible? Anything that you like to say at all to the student in Arlington that like to get involved in the program, like anything that you like to share that make them come out to see you guys? If you have a vision and if you're passionate about something and if there's a problem that your community is facing, you can be a part of solving that problem. David? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, the uh, yeah. I think in our students, uh, it's been really inspirational to see just how much uh, the program means to them. There's a just by virtue of us saying to them, you know, we, we require them to start their own business and just see like I don't know. It's not like oh I can. It's like oh I have to. Um, but they have the freedom to do whatever sort of business they want, and having that, uh, the resources to make that happen, mm -hmm. I think is really empowering, and definitely shows in their, uh, their confidence, their motivation. Um, they start walking a little taller. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's really interesting. It's nice to see them grow over uh, three years with us. Thank you for coming. I really yeah, appreciate having you, you both. Having Such a wonderful project, and I think both of you and I thank your father for referring me to you and I thank ACMI for allowing me to come back for my to have my third episode the Nicole's review is always love to have great guests and stay tuned for more Nicole's review we have great guests coming we'll see you next time thank you for watching Nicole Samarco your host Nicole's review thank you